On December 23rd, I'd finished cooking, turned on my television, and watched a bunch of NBA games. Amazing NBA games. And then I went on Twitter to see what people were talking about on Instagram. And little did I know that the entire world was talking about something else entirely. Well, I should clarify, not the entire world, but black America. What were they talking about? Well, they were talking about Tory Lanez and Megan Thee Stallion. Ugh, here we go again. The consistent degradation of the culture into the most ratchet, primal, violent appeal is seemingly inescapable by the black masses. And yes, there was literal violence, literal violence. Somebody got shot. Does If that doesn't tell you that this is uh, the most ratchet black, stereotypically black interaction that you could possibly create or draw, write a script up about, well, this was reality, unfortunately. If you've been living under a rock, you might have heard that two years ago there was an altercation between Tory Lanez and Megan Thee Stallion. The altercation, the altercation resulted in Megan having to get stitches from being shot in her foot and allegedly Tory Lanez yelling dance as he was shooting her in the foot or shooting at the ground. Now, I'm not going to go directly into the court proceedings and the evidence that was presented but the case concluded on Friday, and Tory Lanez was found guilty on three counts. Assault with a semi-automatic firearm, carrying a loaded, unregistered firearm in a vehicle, and discharging a firearm with gross negligence. Now, I definitely heard rumblings on the internet leading up to the proceedings. However, with the conclusive verdict... My desire to engage and lurk, yes, yes, yes. I am a lurker, and I wear that sign, that group, that whatever you want to call it, proudly <laughs> on conversations surrounding NBA games. Um, you know, it was completely overshadowed by the conversation surrounding Tory Lanez. You know, nobody wanted to talk about basketball or anything else, really. They wanted to talk about this situation. Now... My sincere question, and this is, you know, all jokes aside, is a serious one. As men, why exactly as black men do we care about these entertainers so much? You know, it's unsurprising to me that women get involved with entertainment culture to the extent that they do. But why exactly are men so focused on what happens in the life of these entertainers? While we were focused on the Megan Vittori case, other communities... You know, they were focused on the Russia-Ukraine conflict and the manufactured movement to try to raise Ukrainian flags in various assembly house houses, which was not as successful as anticipated. Um, others were focused on the Twitter files and the FBI's involvement and Twitter's policy implementations. Meanwhile, we, on the other hand, was worried about Tory Lanez. We're worried about Tory Lanez. A singer who was in an altercation with a female rapper. First of all, why exactly is Tory arguing with a woman that's not even his girl or his wife or his spouse or significant other? Secondly, how exactly does a gun enter into the interaction with a woman who's not even your girl or wife or spouse or significant other? You know, part of me thinks that it may be the lack of economic or and or political clout that makes us shun topics surrounding political conversations, military, military conversations, and other conversations that men around the world have. Men around the world have. Regardless of the reason, it has to change, and I'm talking directly to the men right now. Tory Lanez is an entertainer. He is not a business person. He has not created hundreds or thousands of jobs for black men, which are very much needed. 
He is not in tech. He's not an engineer. He is not a scientist who made a significant human discovery. He is not in medicine. He literally adds zero tangible value to black people or the human race overall. Now, my question to you is why on earth is he important? When you think about the kings of other communities, the icons that they look up to, let's just take a look at, in the modern sense, what other communities and who their icons are. Well, when you talk about white men, you would probably say, at least right now, their king is Elon Musk. Do I even need to compare Elon Musk and his accomplishments to Tory Lanez? Well, one person actually sends sends rockets to space regularly. One person wants to colonize the universe. One person actually has created a viable business model around electric vehicles, which has literally changed the landscape for vehicles and vehicle manufacturing for the next 10, 15, 20, 50, 100 years. And the other person creates songs to be consumed once every other year. Do you see how ridiculous it is that this is this level of this major of this major conversation that people want to have? How ridiculous this is? Well, what about the Chinese? Well, the Chinese, their icon, you know, for the ones that, you know, can't when you you, actually when you put aside uh, the, 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 the. prime minister of China because he is the one and only, <laughs> you know, it is a communist regime. So um, there is no one who can supersede him and his significance because he will disappear them just like he did Jack Ma. But outside of the prime minister of China, probably you would say Jack Ma. Jack Ma founded Alibaba, one of the largest e-commerce platforms on earth. And then you have a lot of other people in science and in engineering. I forgot the individual's name, the scientist that actually successfully cloned a, I believe it might have been a sheep or some animal. Successful cloning, right? These are the, and then maybe when you you consider Indians, you have the Ambani's, um, you know, who just recently passed the $50 billion net worth mark who has, who owns Jaguar and a bunch of European vehicles as well as Indian vehicles and um, has a conglomerate in various businesses as well. So my question is, why on earth is our focus on Tory Lanes? You know, Earn Your Leisure just had a fantastic interview with Robert Smith. Oh, you know, that Robert Smith, the wealthiest black man on in America. You know, the black man that owns a private equity firm that is in private equity in previously was in invest, investment banking actually has ended and paid off student loan debt at Morehouse for all of the students in the 2021 class, I believe it was last year. And actually, if you had listened to the Earn Your Leisure podcast, you would have learned that this isn't just something that he's doing once, he's actually implementing a system that allows each and every subsequent class to graduate without student loan debt and using that loan process to give back to the next class. Now, technically, 
it's not government student loan debt. It's it's it's, it's educational financing from a fund that you pay back at very low interest rates and goes into back into the fund after as you're paying it to pay for the next younger generation's class of student uh, funding that they need. And the cycle continues year after year after year, where the previous class is paying for the current class and the current class then pays for the next class when they are, you know, getting into their careers. I mean, it's much better than paying back student loans to a U.S. government. This is something controlled for, that is for us, controlled by us, and is you to reinvest into our own communities. Oh, no, but no, 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 no. You know, we can't talk about that, right? That's not important. Creating more black business people like Robert Smith, billionaires who can actually end up paying off an entire class of student debt who is brilliant enough to create systems that allows for the debt burden that we have to be remedied slightly. Thinkers who are actually addressing the issues that we have as black men and as black people Oh no, 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 let's not let's not talk about that. Let's not have conversations about that. Let's not make that go viral. Let's talk about Tory Lanez and Megan Thee Stallion and whatever else they got going on. Let's make that viral amongst our circles and not spot not let's not make banking, private equity, finance viral in our circles. Let's not do that. Black men in the West, specifically, it's time we get our priorities in order. We need to start raising our level of conversations to where men of other nations are at. Finance, politics, military operations, natural resources. It is time that we stop arguing with women fruitlessly it gets you nowhere and it doesn't address the issue the issue we have is not Tory Lanez or Megan Thee Stallion the wish the issues that we have are economic they're political and they're based on generations of inequality and if we are not making significant strides to remedy those problems and issues that we have and play significant catch up while we'll forever continue to complain and be willing to argue conversations that have no business being argued about. This has been the Black Zeitgeist. Until next time, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Raise your level of conversations and have a wonderful Christmas. Until next time.